little bit about some of the books that are quite popular uh, just in general on booktube that have been recommended that I'm really not that interested in reading. Some of these may be books that you love, some of these may be books that you hate. Quite a few of these are series that I've started that I'm not going to be finishing. To preface all of this, I normally try to get at least a third of the way through a book regardless of how large it is or what it is to really give it the chance to pick up and see if it's going to be something I enjoy. I have a very hard time saying I'm not going to finish this book. It's easier for me to say I'm not going to pick up the next book in a series than it is to just put down a book. The first book on this list is Three Dark Crowns by Kendar Blake. I realized how popular this was when it first came out. Everybody on booktube was talking about it. It's a beautiful looking book and the synopsis of three princesses with different powers competing to be the queen. I could not even get a third of the way into this book. I got the audiobook on Audible and I had just finished a Court of Mist and Fury, so I was really looking for the next something to get me out of the just emotional state I was in after finishing that book. I'd heard good things thus far about Three Dark Crowns, so I started listening to it, and maybe it would be different if I had picked up a hard copy. Maybe I would have gotten further into it, but I did not like the narrator. I did not like where the story was going. I don't see myself purchasing this book because since I decided I wasn't going to finish the audiobook, I've heard some mixed reviews that it wasn't necessarily what it had been promoted to be. It, the story wasn't really what people had thought it was going to be. I may revisit this book in the future, and if I do, I'll probably get it from my library and I will, like, go buy it. The next book. I have started this series, and I think I finished the original main series, and that was the uh, Shadowhunter series, and I have a vague memory of what happens in those books. I probably read them my sophomore year in high school, so about seven years ago and they had I believe when I was reading them they had just recently come out or they had only been out for like a year or two. They, I remember I enjoyed them for what they were and I finished I think I finished them I think there's like three or four of them and I finished it and then I forgot about it and then a movie about it came out and I was like oh that's kind of neat and then I never saw it and I heard that it was terrible so I guess that's good that I never saw it now it's a TV show and I actually started watching the TV show for whatever reason I never finished watching. I should probably finish watching it. I've heard good things. There are apparently spinoffs. I know Clockwork Prince is a thing and Clockwork Angel. I'm just not interested in picking those up. And I may go back and reread the original set, the original series, get back into them again, and then decide I want to carry on and read these additional spinoff series. But right now, I don't see myself doing that. The next one, a lot of people are going to get upset about this. The Lunar Chronicles. I really, really liked the concept of Cinder. I got the audiobook. I listened to it. I enjoyed Cinder for the most part. Then I got the second one, which I think is Scarlet. I really like fairy tale retellings. Especially this one is set in almost like a dystopian world of Cinder. She's a cyborg. There is a moon queen. There's a whole lot going on in Cinder, and I liked it. But then we got to Scarlet, which is supposed to be a modern day Little Red Riding Hood story. And I got probably. 60 to 75 percent of the way done with that book and just never finished it because I stopped caring. After the second book I wasn't invested enough in those characters to see what happened. As with all the other books in this list I may revisit this series and I may finish it and I may love it but when I was reading them or in this case again listening to them I found myself wanting to do read something else instead of continuing on with that series. Another very popular series it's a trilogy is the Divergent series. I never picked these up and I don't think that I ever will pick these up. They're not something really that I'm interested in. I did see the first movie and I don't think I saw any of the movies after that and I probably won't. I've heard a lot of frustration about how the series ended and then Veronica Roth came out with Carve the Mark and apparently that was supposed to have a more satisfying ending to the Divergent series but that's not something that I can see myself getting really all that interested in especially if it ends in the way that I've been told it's in. it ends in. Also I've been spoiled for the ending with all of the frustration and I'm not mad about that but since I know how it ends I really don't feel like I need to read it now and also why would I want to purposely read a book that I know the ending is gonna frustrate me I want to talk a little bit more about a genre as a whole which is YA contemporary I have read very very little YA contemporary and I have enjoyed some of the ones that I've read but it's not something I tend to reach for I really like young adult and new adult fantasy and fiction I really I have a whole video on the things that I like and look for and a whole video on the things that I don't like and I don't look for and I have a hard 
hard time bringing myself to reach for a contemporary book. I think the last genuinely contemporary, young adult contemporary book I've read was Fangirl and I listened to it and I enjoyed that book. I don't think I will probably pick up anything else by Rainbow Rowell. Not a priority for me. A lot of the other contemporary books that I've read have been like romance novels, not necessarily like the paperback Harley Quinn novels that the old ladies always read on the train or something, but like if they were a movie it would be a romantic comedy chick flick but in a book. I don't often find myself reading books about normal people. I tend to go for the more fantasy fiction, that thing I really want to read about magical people, magical worlds and stuff like that. And then there's this last book. And I've already mentioned this on Facebook in a few of the booktuber or otherwise book related Facebook groups that I'm in. I got very mixed results when I put this thought forward. Several people agreed with me and some people were shocked. I tried so hard to like this because the concept as it was presented to me was that it is a circus and there are two magician, two young adult magicians that are put in this competition that takes place during the circus and they fall in love. And I thought that was an interesting premise. I like the opportunities that having your story set in a circus presents, especially a magical mystical circus where there's magicians and other magical things going on. I really, really, really wanted to like this book. This is going to be the perfect book for somebody. I am not the reader for this book. I was originally going to do a book talk video for this for Valentine's Day since it's supposed to be a love story, but I can't even finish it. So instead of doing an entire book talk on that, I'm going to just kind of wrap up my feelings about it in this video and I'll talk about it again in another video for the people that don't really want to watch this one. I think that this book was beautifully written. This book is 512 pages long and I got to page 181, which is about a third of the way through the book. I expect the action of a book to at least start by here. And this book, while it's beautifully read, is not what I thought it was. And that's no fault of this book. And that is no fault of this author. Erin Morgenstern wrote a beautiful, poetic bit of prose that covers 512 pages. I cannot write 512 pages of prose as beautiful as this book. However, I also don't want to read 512 pages of prose. I like prose and I like poetry and I love beautiful descriptive writing like this book, but I don't want it to take place of the story. I want it to complement the plot and the characters and the story. I got about a third of the way through this book and I felt that I was just spoon fed beautiful, beautiful purple prose and there was no story behind it. It was just, look how pretty I can write, but don't dig too deep. Now, I don't know if there's a story to the book that I'm missing because I'm not gonna finish it. I may finish this in the future when I'm in a little bit more of a poetic mood, but what I'm looking for right now is character driven, interesting plot. I would read a 500 page book about two people sitting in a room together and having a conversation if it was interesting characters, really doesn't, it introduces a lot of potentially interesting characters, but doesn't seem to be interested in developing them much past describing their surroundings. I like to read dialogue and there was hardly any dialogue in this book. I don't know, maybe the final two thirds of this book fix all of the problems that I'm having with the story. I just cannot force myself to push through the prose anymore to find the story. And I really, really wanted to like this book and I just I can't. So what I think I'm gonna do with this book, because I did buy the very pretty book um, and a lot of people do like it and a lot of people want to read it and this will be a great book for the right person. What I think I'm gonna do is I'm only a few subscribers away from 100. I'm gonna give this book away once I reach 100 subscribers, this copy right here. There's nothing special about it. I got it on Amazon. It's just a paperback copy, but it's not signed or anything. It's nothing, there's nothing fancy about it. I'm gonna give this book away when I reach 100 subscribers. So if you're interested in winning this book, I think we're gonna do US only. I'll come up with more details about it later, but I'm probably gonna do US only for shipping. At 100 subscribers, I will send this copy to somebody who wants it. I am finally coming to terms with the fact that I don't have to finish every book that I start. It's something that I've always had problems with because I want to finish it because I'm like, well, what if it gets better? What if it gets better? I'm not in high school anymore. I'm not being graded on finishing books. 
I'm not going to be required to write a paper on any of these books. I don't have to look for symbolism in these books. If I see it, that's beautiful and that's great and that means that the author probably did what they intended to do, but I'm not gonna force myself to read a book that is just not engaging me. And if that upsets some people, I'm sorry. And if you love and are passionate about prose and poetry, that is the book for you. I'm not. I want story and I want prose to be brought in and to complement the story, but I don't want it to take the place of the story, which is what I felt was really going on in that book. Give me your thoughts. Just give me your thoughts on all of these books down below. Should I finish the Lunar Chronicles? Should I go back and reread the Shadowhunters series? Three Dark Crowns was I was what I was told right? Like, is that not the book we thought it was? Do you have a really awesome young adult contemporary book that you think I might like? And should I give the Divergent series a go? I probably won't. Friday's video of this week will be the cliches tag, which is a list of 10 questions about different cliches that we often see in book related media. That's a good way to put that. Because we're getting to Valentine's Day, I'm gonna start talking a little bit more about romance. So Monday of next week's video will be about romance that was done not well. Like always, all my social media links will be down in the description box below. I have Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, and Kick if you'd like to text me, as well as a Goodreads account so you can follow me there and keep updated on what I'm reading. Right now I'm reading this book, which is a cute little romantic comedy book about two opposites attract. It was made into a Disney Channel movie a couple years ago and I don't think I actually watched the movie but I heard that the movie was cute and this book is just after reading something that was as heavy and poetic as the night circus I just needed something a little light and fluffy to read to sort of perk me back up let's read all the books and be best friends bye guys <laughs>